When we first thought of going for the Olympic bid, what ran through my mind is that this was going to be a tremendous thing for young people in this country going forward. They had no idea what the journey would be like, how it would be a roller coaster of emotions. I guess it's one of those things where it invades you. You're standing there saying, wow, this is such a meaningful thing for the world. And here it is right in front of us. And we worked hard for this. The idea of bidding for the Olympics came from the fact that uh, we wanted to build a field house. The Booster Club at that particular point in time was made up of downtown businessmen. It was a focus on amateur sport, particularly at the high school and university level. We discussed the possibility of submitting ourselves for a bid for the Winter Olympics. Frank and I looked at one another and we just, we just knew this was something that we had to do. Things were really booming in Calgary in 1978. In fact, you could look down to downtown Calgary and you saw cranes everywhere. I mean, it was a, it was a joke actually that we had cranes all over the city and uh, things were really booming. It was a community with gusto. It had self-made people. It's what it's always been. People who didn't come from old money but came from their entrepreneurial spirit. At a meeting, uh, one of the provincial people said, what is your authority on this, to do this? And we just thought, what is all this about? I mean, we're just a group of citizens trying to improve the lot for the city. It was a huge learning curve that had to take place because it had not been held in Western Canada before. We didn't have any facilities at the quality level that you would expect to have for the Olympics. And so one would say, well, there's no chance you'll get the Olympics. We'd say, well, wait a minute. Wouldn't this world be a better place if we built something that was better here, better there, better there, and filled out this gap? The bid process required that the COA, first of all, select a city to bid for the games. And there were two cities running, Vancouver and Calgary. And so they had to choose between the two cities as to which, uh, which city they would go with. And both had very, very good bids. Vancouver, just being here is a celebration. For as many as seven months out of the year, Vancouverites and their visitors can enjoy snow sports on the mountains rising above the north shore of Burrard Inlet. Vancouver was the one that just barely lost through the previous four years when a Canadian bid city had to be chosen. And so they were considered a shoe-in to win the Canadian bid. And they said, and Calgary has won out over Vancouver for the right to be Canada's bid. And then they went and said, let's go showcase our community to the world. We had to raise money to support our bid, and we sold pins as a major uh, way of raising funds. So we would go up and knock on the door and say, uh, this is who we are, and this is what we're trying to do, and we think that Calgarians will all benefit if we have this, and um, would you mind signing up as a member uh, here, and uh, it, it'll cost you $5. And we got $83,000 that day. They sold the concept of a legacy. They sold the concept of helping young people, of building things for young people. And I think Calgary was ready. Calgary wanted to break out, wanted to say we deserve to be considered a world caliber city. And this was one way to do it. We did have two paid employees and they were both administrative in nature because there was just too much to do administratively. But everyone else was a volunteer. Everyone else was a volunteer in the games. We'd have dinner parties when IOC members would come. The salmon would be brought by Fred Wattilla from his salmon fishing. Uh, Margie Niven would bring her spinach salad and Peggy Warren would bring the dessert. We all worked together. 
and uh, it was very much a, a, a team effort. It was really bizarre trying to get the federal government to come up with the $200 million to pay for its share of facilities. It created the loony. When they created the loony, they made a profit of about 75 cents for every loony they created. It's called seniorage. The first $150 million profit from that process paid for the federal commitment to the Calgary Olympics. The bid book that went to Baden-Baden was our formal presentation. We had to show our sports, we had to show our sites, we had to show all of our ceremonial things that we were going to do, our arts programs, etc. We had to tell the IOC what we were going to do. At Bragg Creek, west of Calgary, $50 million will be spent on new ski jumping facilities and on tracks for bobsledding and luge events. We had originally proposed Bragg Creek, and Bragg Creek, frankly, just didn't have enough snow. Why are we going out to Bragg Creek when we can put them right at the edge of the city? Because they met the technical specs, and uh, so it was the right thing to do. Dick Pound was then one of the two IOC members from Canada, and Dick has often referred to our bid book as one of the best uh, examples of fiction ever written in, in Canada. <laughs> literally talked to every IOC member by traveling to his place or hers and uh, around the world. We visited the IOC president time and time again to say, what would you think of this? Oh no, I wouldn't like that. What about this? Yes, this would be good. You know, So we had the support uh, even of the top official and we, we didn't stop there. It's just like any human relationship, you have to build the trust and you have to build a relationship with those people and the only way you can build that relationship is get to know them and we went out of our way to travel the world and um, meet them at conferences, meet them at congresses, meet them at sporting events. They could never turn around that they didn't hear the Calgary story. Roger Jackson went to Morocco and the IOC member was the president of the country. It was so important that he had a visitor from a bidding city that he actually shut down government for the day and just entertained Roger uh, and uh, his uh, group. I think we were confident. I think we were a bit nervous. Uh, remember, Calgary was and is the can-do city, and uh, that was the attitude we took into Baden-Baden. In Baden-Baden, we knew we had two weeks to close. So we had to tell the story, uh, the Calgary story, as best we could. They were competing against Cortina d'Ampezzo, Italy, which had already held the games in 1956, and Falun Sweden. Uh, Sweden has wanted so much to have the games. It was nerve-wracking because there were three quality bids, and rumors abound that one or the other was ahead or not. Keep in mind the fact that this is 1981, and Canada had boycotted the Summer Olympics in Russia. We boycotted the Summer Games in Moscow because the Russians had gone into Afghanistan, and so we had the entire Soviet bloc, which as I recall was either 13 or 17 votes which we could not count on getting. All of the members from Africa, all of the members from South America, all of the members from the Caribbean knew nothing about winter sport. And here they were trying to select the best site for the winter games. And the one person that they respected the most was Mark Hodler, who was president of the International Ski Federation. And Mark Hodler, befriended us, and I know that he contributed to our success. When we were going to Baden-Baden and knew that we would have to really uh, get in the saddle right away, um, a friend of mine said, you know, anytime I travel to Europe, I always get a little prescription 
of very mild sleeping pills so that I don't have the jet lag. Poor Frank. <laughs> One day he was saying, oh, I really feel a cold coming on, and this was right before he had to give the presentation on behalf of Calgary. Well, of course, he reached for the wrong little packet, and he ended up taking four little sleeping pills. Well, he was to present to the, uh, to the um, key players in the IOC, and he's like, Frank, Frank, wake up, wake up, wake up. And uh, it was really funny. He came back with Bob Niven, and I said, oh, how did it go? He said, well, fine, I guess, but Frank was just really very quiet. He didn't say a word on the way home, and he went directly to bed after we, we got back. And of course, I then figured out what had happened. <laughs> we are happy. Uh... It's been such a long time, and we've waited for this day for so long. Now we have about 30 more hours to wait, and uh, we'll know what the result of all this work is. We tried to make it more an answer to what the IOC always wants. Uh, they want the world to be able to have their children and their families and whatnot grow up playing sports. We went to make sure that every IOC member knew we had that, that, we had that problem solved. It totally reflected the Calgary bid. Uh, not ostentatious, simple, with a strong message about legacy, of cost control, and of a passionate community that really wanted the games. Well, I have a little bit of French, and we had two towns, Falun in Sweden, and and Cortina in Italy, and we had one city, Calgary. And when he stood up, he said, and the winners are saying this in French, la vie de, well, we were the only city, and the is French for city. So I jumped up, because I knew at that point it was going to be Calgary. I'm glad it was, because <laughs> I would have looked rather silly. A la ville de Calgary. I'll never forget the victory celebration that night. Uh, uh, Peter Lougheed, the, the famed Alberta Premier, up on stage singing, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. And Alberta bound in everything. There's winners and losers. And in that case, uh, hard work, the engagement of the community, getting the community to support it. Uh, I think we're deciding factors. It's great. It's going to be a lot of development, a lot of money coming in. <laughs> I think it's terrific. It's just going to do wonders for Calgary. And the games went off, as you know, very, very well. We had money at the end. That money has since gone on uh, to help sport in this country. We were the foundation for the development of high-performance amateur sport in Canada. So from that standpoint, that's a legacy. The other legacy is in respect of the buildings and the facilities that were built. So what it did was it put Calgary in the world map. Every year there's still Olympians that come and train here. There are international competitions and, and other national competitions. So really we are a go-to place for winter sport. Yeah. Look at all those kids. <laughs> yeah, that makes you feel good. That's what it's all about. Yeah. We didn't know how good we could be until the community demanded that we be great. And uh, it was an absolutely fantastic time for this city and this province and this country. Mm -hmm.